Hi everyone, I'm Evan. And I'm Rebecca, and today I'm gonna introduce you to my new billy goat. So we've got, uh, she got a new billy goat that's like two years old, and we've got them set up back here where we used to have our camper. So right now we kind of put something temporary together. We did like a really quick, really small pin. So today we'll introduce you to the new billy goat, and then we've got some Premier One fencing. We're gonna try to expand the goat pen and make it a little bit bigger so they can uh, definitely have a bigger area to forage. So let's go over and see the new billy goat. Knock it out. Gracie's taking them off. Hey, come here. <laughs> All right. So this is Dexter. He's my two-year-old registered Nigerian dwarf billy goat. Um, we had to drive about an hour and a half to get him. <laughs> He's really nice. <laughs> He's a little aggressive. He's definitely in rut and he stinks. Horrible. <laughs> I think everyone within a couple miles can smell him. <laughs> walking down the lane from the house we smell him before we get to the barn it's terrible and the reason he stinks so bad is because when they're in rut they pee all over themselves <laughs> and they drink the other goat's urine it's so disgusting but he thinks it's hilarious he gives us a nice big smile afterwards and <laughs> But that stink can get on you too. It's pro it's on you now that you've touched them. Yeah, and it's hard to get out. Like I I researched on the internet how to get rid of it, and they were saying aloe vera, which we have some soap with aloe vera, so we were been using that. But sometimes it takes three or four times of washing to get the smell out. It permeates everything. Okay, so we weathered Luke um, after we got him so that he could be a companion for a buck in the future. So here's our future buck. <laughs> and so now Luke has is been put in here as a permanent companion for Dexter. And Gracie was still allowing the twins to uh, breastfeed, although she was starting to dry up, which is what we wanted so we could rebreed her. Um, so we put her in here with the buck to kind of um, help that process along. And she doesn't get any type of grain uh, or feed at all except for the hay now and minerals. Um, and it looks like she's drying up pretty good. So now we're hoping she gets bred in time for some April babies. <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> okay, and then also, <laughs> um, <laughs> he thinks he's really cute. Dexter has scurs up here on his head. So he was disbudded. You can see them. Are you going to show him your scurs? And so he has had like the horns try to regrow. And these are called scurs after they've been disbudded when these grow back. <laughs> you, you like them scratched, I know. So I'm actually, I've kind of looked online about what to do with those. And I've seen where some people have had luck with banding banding the same way that we did Luke um, to weather him um, and it looked like probably the least invasive um, option so I thought I'd try that first I'm not done it yet but that's what I'm planning to do his skirts are kind of big and wide so it may be difficult but we'll see how it goes <laughs> as you can see we've got a pretty small pin here for the goats it's just really that carport and then this little area behind it um, we only had a few fence panels to make something up uh, in the meantime so what we ended up doing is buying some premier one uh, netting and we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna put that up around and try to make a bigger perimeter for them I don't know if you can see this but there is just a bunch of kind of we got blackberry bushes wanting to come up in here we haven't mowed it we've got super tall grass that hasn't been mowed all year and then I'm not sure We'll be able to move this fencing around for sure but if you go this direction you can see all that super tall brush 
we've kind of pretty much stopped mowing up here. We just pretty much mow um, a few trails and stuff to be able to walk through. And uh, there's plenty of tall grass and brush around here for the goats to, uh, to eat on. So we're going to go ahead and get out the Premier One netting and uh, see if we can set up a new perimeter. And then this little, the few stock panels are here. We'll take them down and let them into the new area. So we just got done putting the fencing in. Uh, we did have to take the mower. We went ahead and mowed where the fencing was uh, to try to prevent it from grounding out. There is a few places, I can hear a few places around here where it is snapping against the ground. Um, but I think uh, overall it's got about four or 5,000 volts on it right now. So it should be good enough. The, uh, the goats have got shocked on it. Um, I think when we plugged it in the first time, I think Dexter was actually licking it. Um, so he learned pretty quick. Uh, he did test it again later, got shocked again. Um, the big problem was Luke. See, these goats have never been introduced to electric fence before, so that they, this is, uh, they're not sure what it is. So uh, we were messing around on this side, and somehow Luke got in the electric fence, got tangled in it. He was screaming. We had to unplug it. Yeah. I, I heard him right away and just unplugged it and ran around there and his leg was caught in the fence and the yeah. Ba yeah the bad thing was I mean besides that he was all tangled in it and it's a good thing that we were here so they're not used to it yet um, is that when he got tangled in it it actually did pull the fence out of the ground and um, so we ended up putting like an additional post on that end over here next to this building over here this is where it pulled out of the ground that end pulled out and uh, to help uh, prevent that from happening again. But uh, Luke has tested the fence since then. He's put his nose up there, kind of testing around. He got snapped with it. So both the boy goats have tried it twice. So I think they've kind of learned to stay away from it. We're just kind of, we're waiting on Gracie. Gracie is, uh, 
she is being real cautious. She sees what's happening to everybody else, but she hasn't got shocked herself yet. So. She's a little more suspicious. Yes. She's, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and they seem more suspicious of, of us. When we first got in here, you know, they were like all over us. We could not even like take any pictures. They were wanting to climb on us. And now that they've got shocked, it's almost like we've tortured them. They don't and trust us anymore. They don't trust us anymore. They're not even they're not even interested in us anymore. So, but they do have all this grass that they can chew on now. So, um, at least they got a bigger area. Um, we did use this uh, old carport in here, you know, and we set this up. And it ended up getting cold the other day and we needed to make like something to keep them out of the wind and stuff. So we had this old water tank and um, it had cracks and everything in it. It had a few holes. So we dumped the water out of it, the rainwater that I'd got in it. And it took, this was the quickest, I think, animal shelter we'd ever made. Like we drilled like four holes in the corners and then took a saw and just buzzed out the, a hole and rolled it over here. So that... That water tank is probably like a quarter inch thick plastic. So it's really kind of heavy duty plastic filled out full of straw. And that's going to be, it's big enough for all three goats to be able to get in there. So hopefully um, if it gets real cold, cause it got down and frosted last night, got down to about 30 degrees last night. So hopefully they can get in there and, and uh, stay warm in that straw if they need to. The hay, fill, hay feeder we had just built, it's, it's in here. And then we've got, um, We've got some a couple pallets here that they can lay on. They've got a pallet here they can lay on and a pallet over here. But uh, it is kind of windy in here. We've noticed that today, like the wind wants to tunnel through here. So eventually we may add some more siding to this, put some, put some more walls up or something just to be able to give them a little bit more shelter. But I think for a quick goat shelter, I mean, this was already here. It was already next, next to electricity. It was next to water. So we had everything here to be able to take care of the goats. So this yeah. was like real simple and easy to turn into a goat pen. Uh, so it's worked out pretty good so far. I think uh, we'll come back. This electric netting is actually poultry netting. Uh, this is our first time trying netting, electric netting. And uh, so we can use that in the summer if we end up uh, raising some meat birds or whatever. But uh, I think this is just a temporary solution right now. We'll probably come back mm -hmm and uh, actually put in fence posts and, and put in a permanent uh, fencing system up here on this front uh, corner of the property just for the uh, just for the billy goat and, and Luke. Yeah. So, uh, this is, you know, so this is just temporary, but I think it gives them more space. We can move it around and uh, give them some more for forage if we want to. We can kind of shift it and move it around, but uh, we'll just have to see how it goes. So the, anyway, yeah, we'll keep a close eye on them today. Yeah, we'll keep a close eye on them today. We kind of want to stay up here and make sure none of them get tangled in the, the fence. So I don't know if you guys have, have had this electric netting. We don't know what the trouble is with like deer. Is, is deer going to get tangled in it? Or are they going to knock it down? Because um, we have a lot of deer that come right through here. Yeah, so this, this side of the property here is where the deer travel. Uh, there's a fence line that's long over here and um so the deer travel either you know kind of through this side or on the other side of the fence and um yeah so that's i know it's white hopefully the deer can see it but i think time will tell we don't want the goats to get out because a deer got tangled in it and yeah and don't want them to get hit by a car don't no, yeah so this is right this is actually right at the front of the property which is right next to the road so this this fence right here on the other side of those pine trees there is going to be the the road. It's not really a highway, I wouldn't say. We we only get like one car an hour or, or something, maybe a couple. Unless it's Sunday or something where yeah, they're going to shot. where yeah. they're going to church. But uh um yeah, probably like fifty feet from that fence is the road. So we really don't want the goats to get out in the road, that's for sure. Yeah. So, so anyway, that was uh that's my wife's boy goat, Dexter. And like she said, you're yeah. hoping for babies in by april babies babies in april hopefully <laughs> hopefully so yep so anyway thanks for watching guys uh we think we're gonna go get some lunch and come back and check on the goats and we'll see you guys in the next video thanks for watching
Hi everyone, my name's Evan. I'm Rebecca. I didn't know I was supposed to say. <laughs> and today she's supposed to tell you about her goats, but she's not crying. Quite... <laughs> we'll try this again? I guess. <laughs> you can tell I wasn't paying attention. In the, in the truck, tr when we discussed this? Yeah. We had like a we had a pre-video meeting on what she was supposed to say on the intro. <laughs> she ignores me. Yeah. Alright, next. <laughs> Hi everyone, my name's Evan. I'm Rebecca. Oh, am I supposed to say something? Else? You still didn't. Oh, and today I that... get this, I'm going to show you the new Billy Goat that oh. I got. What? <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, I wasn't kidding when I said I wasn't paying attention. You really weren't paying attention. <laughs> Alright, ready? <laughs> this is. This is what I have to deal with. Oh, Maggie! Maggie, no! Maggie, you're not... <laughs> she, she told him. 